In today's video, you're going to learn everything you need to know regarding switch statements in JavaScript. I'm going to explain kind of what they are, how they work, and then you'll come away with this video with a good understanding of switch statements. So first off, what is a switch statement in JavaScript? Well, a switch statement is a statement or it's some code that allows you to check some condition and perform a variety of tasks depending on what that condition is. It acts much like an if statement, but it can be a bit more readable and a little bit more easy to reason about in certain situations. So how did these switch statements actually work? Well, let me show you an example here and explain kind of what's going on. So here on line 15, I define a constant called programming language and I assign it to the value of Python. And here on line 17, this is where I start my switch statement. So to start a switch statement, you start it with the switch keyword, and then you follow that up with the condition that you want to check. So very similar to an if statement in which you use the if keyword, followed by opening up a pair of parentheses and placing the condition you want to check, a switch statement is the very same way. We use a switch keyword, open up a pair of parentheses, and that is the condition we want to check. So we're checking this condition, and then we can open up a pair of curly braces to then go inside the body of our switch statement. And inside the body of a switch statement, you're gonna have different cases for what this condition might be. So I'm gonna check in my cases, okay, it's basically saying if my condition is this, then do this. If my condition is this, do this. But instead of using if statements, use these case expressions here. So you use the case keyword and then you check some value. So this is basically asking, okay, is this condition within the switch parentheses here, does that evaluate to JavaScript? So I'm saying case JavaScript. Is programming language JavaScript? And if that is true, then this is going to run right here. You place a colon and then whatever code is under that colon, that is what you're going to run. So here, since my programming language is Python, I would not enter this case statement and I would just continue on with the switch statement. But here I would check, okay, case Python is my programming language. Does that evaluate to the value of Python? And in here it does. So under my colon here, I run this block of code. Now, one thing that you'll see here is that I use a break statement at the end of this block of code here. And the reason that you need to do that with switch statements is to prevent fall through. So what would basically happen here if, and I'll show you an example of this, if I didn't have the break statement, it would actually kind of fall through and it would run this next case statement of this switch. And we probably don't want that as that's kind of a little bit of weird behavior of switch statements. So we want to make sure to place a break statement, which will break us out of this switch statement and will basically end the running of this statement here. Now, something else that you'll see that is very common with switch statements is having some default case. So this is basically saying if none of these cases are true, so if case JavaScript is not true, if case Python isn't true, so if this program language doesn't evaluate to any of these cases here, then it will run this default code. It's kind of like having an else statement. So we're kind of checking, you know, if programming language is JavaScript, run this. If programming language is Python, run this. Else, just run this default code if none of these cases come true. All right, so let me actually show you how this actually works. So if I run my program here, you're going to see I get console logged. It's Python. And the reason I get that is because in my switch statement here, I'm checking the programming language constant. So right here within my switch, and then I'm checking, okay, case JavaScript. Is programming language JavaScript? No, it's not. So I go to my next case statement. Is programming language here? Does that evaluate to Python? Yes, it does. So it's going to enter this case statement. It's going to console log Python, and then it's going to hit this break statement. It's going to end this switch statement altogether, and it's going to log this to the console. Now, like I said earlier, if I forget this break statement, it's actually going to have some fall through here and it's going to run its rust as well. So if I run this, you're going to see I get it's Python, it's rust. 
And that's because we're getting some fall through here. So you need to put these break statements here to prevent that fall through. Now, if I had this switch statement within a function, you could just potentially hit a return statement instead of a break statement, and that would end the running of that function. But usually in switch statements, you will see these break statements are pretty common to prevent that fall through. Now, let me change my programming language to, to just pi. And I don't have any case statements that will evaluate to true for this programming language variable. So we should just see the default case run here. So if I run this, we see it's the default because none of these case statements evaluate to true. Now, if I put in JavaScript here, you're gonna see that I get it's JavaScript. So it's very similar to writing an if statement, but as you can, if you're just running through your code here, it's, it's fairly readable to just say, okay, we're checking the programming language here, and then we have these cases for what the programming language might be. And we're just checking, okay, well, if it's JavaScript, do this. If it's Python, do this. And it is fairly readable. Now, some teams aren't going to use switch statements at all and just use if statements. As like I mentioned earlier, you can effectively do the same thing with if statements like I do here. So if I get rid of my switch statement here and I, I keep my programming language variable up here, and if I just check, okay, if programming language equals JavaScript, then council log, it's JavaScript, else if it's Python, council log, well, we probably don't want to council log, it's JavaScript, we'll council log, it's Python. I definitely just copied and pasted that and forgot to change it. And then else, this is kind of like our default statement, it's the default. And if I run this code here, you see that I get it's JavaScript because program language equals JavaScript. Now, if I switch it to Pi again, so I don't have anything that kind of catches just PY, you're gonna see I'm gonna run my else statement and I'm gonna get my default case here. So I get it's the default. So you can usually do the same thing with if statements and usually switch statements are for a little bit better readability in some cases. Now, what if you want multiple conditions within your switch statement? So what if I want to check like case JavaScript or Python? Well, there's actually a fairly straightforward way of doing this in which you can just add multiple case statements and you can kind of take advantage of the fall through that occurs. So here I can write these case statements back to back. And this is basically telling me, OK, if programming language here evaluates to JavaScript or if programming language evaluates to Python, then I'll run this code and I'll break out of this. Because like I mentioned with fall through earlier, if I don't add a break statement right here, it's going to kind of keep running through this code. So here I basically can check if programming language is JavaScript or if it's Python, I'm going to run this code. And if I uncomment this here and I run this code, you're going to see I get it's Python or JavaScript. And if I change this just to JavaScript here, you're going to see when I run this, I still get the same thing because this is checking, okay, switch programming language. Does this programming language evaluate to JavaScript or does this programming language evaluate to Python? If yes, run this case statement and then break out of it after that. If no, it's not going to run this. So if I change this to Rust here, you're going to see that I get it's Rust because it's then going to enter this case statement. And then if I don't have a case statement for it, it's going to run my default code here. So I get it's the default. So switch statements in JavaScript are very similar to if statements, although they just have a little bit different syntax and they can be just a little bit more readable at certain points. And to use switch statements, you use the switch keyword followed up by whatever condition you want to check. So in this instance, I would check the programming language value. And then I would write case statements for what that value might be. So case JavaScript is saying, if programming language is equal to JavaScript, then run this code. And if I don't have a case statement for what this value evaluates to, then it will run the default case here. And it's important to add break statements after your cases so you make sure that you prevent fall through and you can just exit the switch statement at that point. And if you want to check multiple cases and run the same code in both those cases, you can just add another case statement 
on back-to-back lines here. And then this is effectively saying, okay, if programming language is JavaScript or if it's Python, then I want to run this code. So hopefully this gives you a good idea on how switch statements work. They are usually used instead of if statements for just readability purposes, and they can come in a little bit handy in certain situations. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in that next one.